Right, hello. This is your first chance to see me with shorter hair, so enjoy that. Um, I did want to do a YouTube video last week, but it was meant to be the Among Us gameplay video, but my laptop just wasn't up to it, so that's not it's not a, not a choice. I'm sorry. Um, it's very fun. We played it a few more times since, and I know who the psychopaths are in our little group now, so always helpful. What I will do is put a little clip up of why we can't use that footage, so you'll see exactly how bad that turned out. But today's video is going to be on when to compete in pile of them. Um, so firstly, here's that clip. I might have one other three. Fucking rubbish! Yeah. I get a bit worried when green and blue were just following me. Sally's still trying to get in. What else? Got one stage left. Press again. Right, so when I get a, get people coming to me wanting to get into powerlifting, one of the first questions they ask, or one of the first things they say is that they're not ready to compete, which isn't really a thing. If you if you know how to do the lifts, you are ready to compete. There's there's no there's no standard to hit, there's no hoops to jump through, really. All you really need to be able to do is to know the movement, which is in squat would be hitting depth, basically. Um, bench, making sure that it touches your chest, comes back up, and then deadlift, making sure you lock it out and then put it back down without dropping it. Now, obviously, there's more to that in terms of commands. So, for example, in the squat, as soon as you know that in most federations that you're listening out for a squat command and then a rack command, that's all you need to know. You get a lot of people who seem to think you have to stop at the bottom of a squat and then come back up. That's not true. You just need to hit depth and then come back up. You need to do that without the bar going back down as well. There's a lot of little rules in there, but generally, as long as you squat down smoothly and then come back up, that's it. It's fine. Make sure that you don't step forward before you get the rack command as well. That is a really easy way to fail squat, and it's one of the most annoying ways to fail squat. Because you've just done all the hard work, and then it's ruined because you got a bit too ahead of yourself. Um, similarly, on bench... In most federations, there's three commands. In a couple, there's only two. So it's normally start, press, and rack. In some federations, it's just press and rack. So in the IPF, you would want to unrack the bar, wait for the start command, you'll get the start command, bring it down to your chest, and once the bar is steady and level, you should get a press command. Some judges will give you a bit of a pause, which is unnecessary, but it happens a lot. And then once you've pressed it out, you'll get a rack command. In a similar way to the squat, don't put the bar back before you get the rack command, because that will be a fail. Don't even be seen to sort of wobble a bit back towards the rack, because that'll also be a fail. So keep it under control. And then on deadlift, pick the bar up. Make sure you don't hit it on the way up. Um, lock it out properly. See a lot of people not locking the hips out or not pulling the shoulders back properly, which is just can be fixed via technique. Um, and then once the referee is happy you've locked it out, they'll tell you to put it down. And then you put it down without dropping the bar. If you drop the bar, that's a fail. Um, so as you can see there, it's quite a low standard of what you need to be able to do. If you can lift any weight in those three lifts, you can compete in powerlifting. Technically, it's got to be more than 25 kilo, but it's still a very low standard. Most people will be able to squat, bench or deadlift 25 kilo if they're looking at part of them. I know some people won't be able to, but I'm talking about people who are looking at eventually competing in part of them. So really, all you need to do is know how to do the lifts, turn up on a day, do the lifts, get at least one lift passed in each lift. So one or two free squats, one or two free bench, one or two free deadlifts. You'll get a total and you've done, you've done a competition. That's it. You've done it. Now, I know... A lot of people are scared of going to a competition and 
I don't know, just seeing, having everyone see them, having, having everyone watching them do the lift. But a lot of the time, those nerves will sort of dissipate as you get onto the platform because you'll just focus on the, the centre referee, um, which normally isn't that scary. And you'll also be at a, you should be at a point by that point in your training that you can just sort of switch off and lift. Um, I'll get to the training on the next point. But really, that, that fear is unwarranted. Once you do your first lift, once you get that first squat in and everything goes well, you're fine. And as I said, if you know how to do the lifts, that first squat should go well. There's no reason why it should not. Um, so that fear, some people might be a bit low on confidence, a bit low on self-esteem, which is understandable. That might take a bit more work. But that's something to work on in the gym and something to to keep in mind while you are training is that eventually you're going to be doing this in front of people and people are going to be watching it. And to be honest, I was quite shy when I started, but you do get over that fear fairly quickly. And keep in mind that everyone that's there is going through the same thing. Even if they're seasoned competitors, they're still going to be occasionally nervous by a lift. The, you know, PBs, adrenaline, all of that comes into play. Um, so everyone's on your side. Everyone supports you as well. You might get a few people who don't, but it's the minority. The majority of people there are going to be wishing that you do well, whether you're lifting 25 kilo or 250 kilo in whatever lift. They're going to want you to be doing that. So don't let that fear hold you back because you'll miss out on a good time. It's it's a good day. Um, and the constant improvement that you, you get from training and each time you go to competition doing a little bit better, you'll... It's just a great feeling, so don't miss out on that. Now, I mentioned I'll come to training as well. So with training, obviously that's going to be to get you stronger. It's going to be to get you to do the power lifts in a way that will pass a competition as well. So your training should be of that quality. If your training doesn't get you to the, the level where you can pass a lift, a competition, then it's not working. Generally, if you go into a coach, if you go going to someone who's done a power comp before, you're not going to have that worry because they know what to do. They can get you to that level. So don't worry too much in terms of that. You might also find that with a competition being a long day, it's a bit tiring, which is where the training comes into effect too. Now, I know a lot of powerlifters and strength athletes like to stick to the, the stereotype of not wanting to do cardio or not wanting to, to do any sort of fitness other than just lifting heavy weights. But you need to get over that. You need to, to be fit enough to last the whole day. If you're knackered by your third squat, by the time it comes to deadlift, you, you're not going to be hitting anywhere near what you want to hit. So a good level of fitness is recommended. Obviously not like a marathon running level of fitness, but just so that you know you can hit the heavy weight on each lift all day. Because you might be in a competition where you lift off at nine and don't finish till four or five o'clock. It's a long day. Your training sessions are normally only going to be about an hour, probably. So think of it like that. Now... To sum up, to wrap up this video, what you should be aiming for when you go to your first competition is to just get numbers on the board, to have a total to beat for the next time you compete. Um, you know, if you want to qualify for competitions, great, but if that's a little bit ambitious for your first competition, put it on the back burner for now. Use the first competition, use the first few competitions to just get get used to competing, get the experience of it. As I said, it's a good day and you'll learn stuff about yourself every time you compete. It took me about six competitions to actually get into a good mindset and know how I should be in my own head when I'm actually competing. There is a video earlier about how I became a powerlifter and a powerlifting coach where I go into all my competitions a bit more in detail. I'm not going to bore you over here because that video by itself was 20 odd minutes anyway, so I won't add more to this. But basically... Your first few competitions should be about experience. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, I want to hit British, I want to hit internationals and all of that. Great. If you've got the ability to do that, great. But don't put so much pressure on yourself at first because you'll just miss out on the enjoyment. Just enjoy the competition. And then if you learn that, oh, next time I'll try it this way instead of this way. Great. You've learned something. And then when you do get to national, international level, you have a better basis to go off. So... Just go for experience, enjoy it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Loads of people end up falling out of love with these kind of sports because 
they put so much pressure on themselves that they forget to enjoy it. So at the end of the day, it is a hobby at the minute. Not many of us are getting paid for powerlifting. So try to enjoy it, because especially in 2020 as well, which bear in mind, the title of this competition is when to compete. And it's obviously at least next year now, because COVID's taken that from us. But it's looking positive. So hopefully next year will be good. Um, but yeah, that's my first video in a few weeks. I hope you enjoyed. So I will see you guys next time. Oh, like and subscribe, obviously. Keep that going for me. That'd be great. Thank you. Goodbye.